Turn your poles, right? Shut the gate. Yeah. One more time. Since time immemorial, the Karuk tribe have fished in these falls. Ron Reed is carrying on this tradition and passing on the skill of dip net fishing to his son, Jason. Shut the gate. You want to shut that gate as soon as you get down by that rock? You want to. Every year, salmon swim through these falls on California's Klamath River during an epic journey to their spawning grounds upstream. The beginning part of it is a lot about salmon, so you know, based on what I saw in the beginning, we're going to be gearing toward a dam. Um, it's not just about fishing, per se. Um, I also really like that the beginning filming of when the father is teaching his sons how to fish, it's a very home video style, uh, which is cute because it mirrors uh, the father's original home videos of him fishing when the fish population was higher. And then when we branch out into the actual dam building, it's more um, documentary style, so it kind of shows the future. Um, I also think a standout was definitely the one son who <laughs> made the rent-free joke and the beavers get food while they work, why don't we get food? So his little jokes are great, but he also has a lot of heart when he talks about the salmon equating to the population of the tribe and their well-being. And so he's a really good person to follow because he, he has heart and humor. It's looping in sort of um, a lot of natural ideas and a lot of societal ideas about what human culture has done in relationship with um, nature. And it's used well with showing, showing like a native tribe that is using a technique of fishing that's been around for thousands of generations. And it's pretty um, interesting to watch it play out. The quality of the documentary is, is quite high. It very much looks like um, an animal documentary you would see on a, a major cable um, situation. Um, and you watch as they discover that a natural balance that used to exist between the fish, um, the water, and the beavers has been broken up by um, human involvement. And because they're unable to really um, reintroduce beavers in particular, they now have to make dams themselves and sort of reintroduce a sort of natural balance and hope that the beavers help maintain it. Th this entire concept was um, interesting because it ties in so many things about um, the world and society in general and how certain situations have come about and how, uh, how there's normally a very um, pretty majestic uh, balance between um, nature and everything that's within nature and how humans have found a way to break it up. And really the only way to fix it is to try to reestablish it. The cinematography of this film was beautiful, breathtaking right off the bat. We see the beautiful lakes and the mountains and the film focuses in on the father and son fishing in the in the river. And I think that was a really cool sort of theme of this documentary is that we have all these huge issues of climate change and species disappearing. But then this film shows how that intimately affects this particular tribe and their traditions. Um, I also think this film does a really good job of using archival footage and comparing it to what it is like today using the, the father from the father's past showing how he was able to to fish salmon with no problem there was too many fish to bring back and then flash forward to today and they're struggling to even find any salmon um and i think this film is a really cool call to action and it as it shows the tribe coming together and building the dams to get the beavers back to get the salmon back and ending on a positive note you know, I wasn't aware of the link between beaver dams and, um, you know, s the salmon swim swimming upstream. You know, it was really nice to see these these folks in this in this tribe that were, um, you know, for, first of all, they're, they're, they're like checking on the beavers and watching the beavers and making sure that they're building their own dams. And then they're building beaver dams themselves. It's like they're working hand in hand with nature, with the animals, you know, it, it, it's a really nice concept, uh, you know, and uh yeah, it was really nice to see that these guys really knew what they were doing. They were, you know, um, working like engineers to, uh, you know, duplicate um, the beaver's work, trying to make a dam that the uh, the salmon could could jump over. And um, and wow, what a payoff at the end! You know, we have that extra footage at the end where we actually see the salmon jumping jumping into into the beaver pools. You know, it was really really nice. You know, and it's just like you know these folks working together with their community and with with nature. You, you know, to to save their 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 food supply. You know, I really want the salmon to come back. <laughs> uh, it, it's a bigger issue in the world. I know 
sustainability of food and the net natural ecosystems that have been disrupted um, by people and climate, the climate crisis and everything else. Uh, but this really made it personal as opposed to um, just a more global societal thing. This shows who it's affecting and how it's affecting them. Uh, it's not just a, a food crisis, um, but as they mentioned, which I hadn't really thought about before, a spiritual crisis, how they're so closely related as a tribe to the salmon um, and what the salmon mean to them beyond just sustenance and food. I thought that was really amazing. And then it, it says a lot about the perseverance of, of human beings and of people and what we can do. Um, you know, when the salmon start disappearing and the beavers do too, they they could have said, uh, we'll build a bridge and get over it. But instead they, they built a dam uh, and the fish got over it. There were great visuals throughout, lots of great landscape shots, uh, overhead shots of the rivers, the uh, nature filming, I guess you would call it. I, th I think all of that was working, working very well. Um, there was also a really good use of more direct storytelling in this documentary, where you have the, sm the smaller story of this father and son who are trying to fish in this river, but there's no salmon there for them to catch uh, because of changes to the environment. And so you kind of follow their story and the story of the people around them as they build this dam. And I think it does a really good job of using this story as a way to get you invested uh, and then taking that story and using it to address larger themes about the environment uh, about the impact that humans are having on ecosystems uh, directly or indirectly and how action can be taken to uh, help alleviate that. I learned a lot. I'd never heard about dip net fishing. It was really interesting to me to see it uh, being done. Um, really a great display of ingenuity here. The way they uh, uh, you know, learned about the problem, addressed the problem, um, all within you know the kind of confines of the law and respecting nature, I thought was really remarkable. Um, and it's presented here in a really uh, inspiring and clear way. Um, and it's, yeah, the, the, it ends on a good positive message of hope. Uh, the whole piece was really, uh, really structured really well. This wildlife preservation reservation area, and they talked a lot about how it's affected the community and how they wanted uh, to help the beaver community, beaver population. But I like the message of, you know, um, helping nature and the whole uh, balance between, you know, people that live there all their lives, fishermen and things like that, and how that connects to like the population of animals that live there and how the building the dams is supposed to help. It's also gonna have an effect on uh, that area. So yeah, it was a great documentary, short, and uh, I would like to see it.